Hello, I am Joel Barajas. And I am going to present incrementality testing in parametric advertising. It's an enhanced precision with double blind designs. So my co-author is Narayan Bamidipati, and we both are part of Yahoo Research uh, within Verizon Media. So it's a little bit on the agenda, introduction, experimental design, and causal estimation, results and conclusion. So the context. First of all, measuring the incremental value of advertising is a critical estimation for advertisers within the financial planning. So typically the advertisers within uh, financial organizations or marketing organizations, they often have financial models, like media meets models, uh, that give them an approximation of what is the incremental value of, of a given channel uh, within a, a typical quarter or yearly boy allocations. So within this context, oftentimes running a randomized control experiment is being requested to advert to the ad network because that is the gold standard in market incrementality measurement. And typically those models tend to inform, uh, I mean, those experiments tend to inform financial models in their, uh, in their regular running. So what is incrementality testing? Incrementality testing is basically an A-B test. So within A-B tests, what we do is the goal is to find the aggregate effect of marketing spend. That means why, what is the output that I'm getting by spending certain amount with a given vendor? So typically we have a randomized unit as in any A-B test. We call it users. Experimentation within the open web oftentimes comes uh, with cookies as users or device IDs. But if you have um, a given login users, then might be email addresses or more complex things like households. So it comes to a notion of a user, a randomization unit. So the intervention is straightforward. Marketing spend leading to ad delivery means number of impressions, but the control group is no ads. And that is basically the challenge. So metrics are a little bit standard, leaps and cost per incremental conversion or converters, but the challenge lies that in the control group, there is no ads. So let me explain here. So as I said, it's not as easy as going to data and identify who would have seen the ad in the control group because we don't have that data. In the treatment group, which is the ones that we show ads, it's a straightforward, it's business as usual. We can go ahead and see who saw the ad based on data. We can go see impressions, see user IDs, and count number of users. And then we can connect those to conversions. And that's how, and that's how we do business today. But the challenge comes when we, when we execute an experiment and set up two groups of users, one for treatment and one for control, in the control group, we don't see who would have seen the ad. So one of the typical approaches we see in industry and it's been uh, in research for, for quite some time is placebo-based test, testing. So in placebo-based testing, what we do is we set up a control group with a placebo campaign. So, but what is the issue there? The issue is that that placebo campaign is basically setting up the same campaign, but with ads that are completely related to the advertising. So call it Salvation Army Arms, for instance. So those ads are meant to be a placeholders so that we can see who would have seen the ad in the control group. But the challenge is on the, on the typical targeting systems, machine learning will kick in. So at the beginning, you had a, a fresh start between treatment and control group, but towards the end of a campaign, say after two, three weeks, then the targeting, the algorithms will start deviating because your machine learning algorithm for the treatment group will be trained with very different data than your machine algorithm for your control group. In other words, it's not double blind. It's not double blind to the campaign. It's not blind to the campaign. It's blind to the user, the experimental design, but it's not to the targeting engine as a treatment administrator. So then we have intention to treat. The intention to treat is uh, where we set up that treatment control group point uh, to, to a point where we can identify reliably without any bias, the users who fall into control is fall into treatment. The challenge is that not everybody in the treatment group sees the ad. So there is a portion that we don't have full control, say the auction. And at that point in time, we just need to, there will be gonna be some people who never see the ad, but need to carry on all them together. Otherwise, we could buy an experiment ourselves. And if this percentage here is small, then we are carrying on with a lot of 
uh, users who never see ads, basically added noise, in other words, decreasing precision. And our chances of seeing a significant effect are relatively small. So we do all these uh, improvements in experimentation just to make, make them more precise, to in, introduce precision. Because if we introduce precision, we can test faster, we can take decisions faster, and we can identify uh, lower effects more reliable. So in GOSATS, which is a third set of research here, it comes from the idea that the concept is we can identify the impression before it's being delivered. So in the impression before it's being delivered, we, um, we identify that the user is part of the control group. We can log the would be or goes impression. The challenge there in the typical literature is that within the option, there is a notion that we can control for the option. So our best shot is to do the goes ads before the Ocean is being run. So it's still falling back to intention to treat, but just logging would be uh, bits or ghost bits. So while our contribution here is we had a truly double blind design within our networks, post ocean, and I'll show you how. So that way we, we, we go around uh, any targeting or ocean bias. So it's truly double blind from that point of view, because it's double it's blind to the Targeting engine as a whole, and but within uh, that's within ad networks, but within uh, DSPs or third-party ad exchanges, we can achieve the same precision by increasing the bid of the one that we are going to send. I explain you how, but we are able to identify ghost impressions at the level of impressions, meaning the same precision that you saw in placebo-based testing, but with GOS, with, with a GOS approach, without any bias. So let's review uh, very quickly the typically ad serving flows. And the reason we reviewed them because the point that we introduce the treatment control checkpoint determines what is blind to the spread. So typically in ad networks, we had ad scoring and targeting ranking. So basically you, you get a ranking list of your best ads that you want to show based on machine learning and ranking. and and then the, you, you get in the ad network option. Basically, you set a few, you select a few, you run an option, you find your best. And that ad is being displayed. Within uh, ad exchanges, if you're a DSP, it's fairly similar. We just had an extra step. Oftentimes we run what we call internal option, which is identifying which is the one we're gonna send to external options. But apart from that, everything is the same other than if you win or, or lose is determined by the change. And that is being re re uh, replied to you as a DSP. So the, how we make it happen post auction is by, uh, so here is the scheme, the typical workflow. So what I want you to walk away from here is that we had a double blind design because it's, we made a user hashing checking post auction. And that way we make it happen is by pulling additional ads within the ad option. That means if we had an ad call requesting 10 ads within an ad, or, uh, an ad network, which, we were, which is where we control the marketplace and the options. So rather than, than returning 10, we return say 15, 10 plus five, where five is a system parameter. And then after that, and just after that, we check when the user is within terminal control. So if the user is within control, then we pull addition, then we take out the ad, pull the, say that the control user is in, is in position seven, we take out position seven, pull the net sets up, and then we show, then we, we keep track of the position seven in that ad that's, uh, position seven is rendered, then we load the goals impression. That's how we can make it work because we get additional ads in the auction. So we run a few auctions more to get additional ads for everybody, regardless of whether you're terminal control, and then we check that after. So that's, that's why it's blind to the whole system. Now, in terms of DSPs, this piece is more complex because we don't control the other change here. And I apologize for it is here, but essentially what we do is we get the internal winner, which is the one we were going to send. 
Then we check whether that is a user treatment or control. If the user is treatment, it's business as usual. It's been sent to a lotion, we win, that is delivered, we get the impression. If we don't, then that is not delivered. But it, the, but if the user has and determines that user is controlled, what we do is we increase the bid price, the bid price, and then it's playing there. So if the winner is Coca-Cola and is the campaign running the, the experiment, then we take away Coca-Cola and say the next ad is progressive, send up for progressive. We, in, we send a progressive ad, but if Coca-Cola were going to be $5 and progressive is going to be three, what we do is we send progressive with the same bid value. I mean, we five. That way, if progressive wins, then we can identify the ghost impression for Coca-Cola. So that is the key here. So the counterfactual is, yes, progressive is we're going to be sent anyway. But, but what we do to get the, the, the ghost ads is to increase the bid, the bid price. In the paper, we had a discussion over how to share this cost in practice. You can review that there. But this is the key component of the experimental design. So then the uh, estimations after that, they just became straightforward. Probably the only part here is that I want to emphasize is that we are using within potential outcomes causal model. We need to take into account here's users as a, or if we randomize users, then the unit here, the variability is within users. That is the only cap. That is the only uh, important point here. Other than that, it's pretty much straightforward uh, t-test and hypothesis testing for this. And so the results. So since we are able to identify those that would have been shown an ad and those who saw the ad, we can discard anybody in the intention to treat the sign. Anybody who never see ads and never uh, saw goals ads. That gives us a huge uh, estimation power. So it typically just, I mean, typically the numbers I've seen in DSPs, winning rates are in the order of probably 10% at most. We are lucky, but typically are low. So in analysis, which is a little bit the data that we use here, uh, after say four weeks, there is still a good amount of users who never see ads which is in the order of 60%, 40%. So we are talking about more than half of folks that we need to carry in the, in the analysis that never see ads that are just introducing those. So just here showing, show, showing you this uh, power analysis, you can take a look offline if you want more in detail, but what I, I want you to walk away here is the best shot you had intention to treat when you had ghost, uh, ghost beating, which is one of the standard practice in industry today, uh, the best shot you have a 50% uh, control treatment separation, which you never get because nobody is gonna give up 50% of the, of the audience just to measure this, these numbers. You could achieve that at 8% with all the same. So after 8%, everything else is pure profit. So typically you could recommend 10, 12, 15, and it's gonna be always better than the ones you get in attention to treat under these conditions. That is what our main takeaway here. And I show you in the paper, we show you in the paper one, just one case study for um, insurance quotes. So there you could get here a leave, which is 10%, very significant. But probably the, that's the point I wanna emphasize here is uh, we found evidence that last touch attribution in post-click post -click conversions or Clit, uh, I to uh, C to C, click to conversion attribution, tend to undervalue uh, the net effect of, adverti of, of advertising for display channels. And that is because many people don't click. And many people who actually had an influence don't click on the ads. And, and, and that, that is one of the takeaways we got from there. The differences are significant, it's by 80%. So it's large enough to claim that, uh, to make the claim. So probably more research is to be done in this area, but I want you to, to, to walk away with that. And yeah, in the conclusion, we introduce two experimental designs to prove precision of goals ads. So basically making that work and making that work to take faster decisions in an ongoing marketing uh, strategy organization and partnering with, with, uh, with, that, with that network. You could do any targeting you want because it's double blind.
there is no constraints. So it's faster testing. Uh, we found evidence that post quick conversion attribute tends to underestimate the value of display, particularly because display advertising is open in the phone. And that's it. And thank you very much. And Joel Barajas and Narayan Bamidipati, we both are within Verizon Media and Yahoo Research. So any question, you can always reach, reach out to us. Thank you.